um, formulated um, the last uh, guidelines on narcolepsy in Europe, uh, I believe something like 15 years ago. So in the meantime, there have been major uh, progress uh, in, uh, in the treatment uh, of narcolepsy. And uh, the recently published guidelines were um, actually summarizing uh, the great progress in, in, our, in our treatment um, um, possibilities uh, for uh, patients with narcolepsy. What I would like to uh, emphasize in the preparation of the current guidelines are two, three things that are really to be considered a novelty. Uh, also, uh, if compared to other guidelines and particularly to the old guidelines uh, from Europe. The first one is that we have for the first time also recommendation about treatment of narcolepsy in children, which is, um, you know, was much needed. And finally, we start having some evidence, although certainly not as good as in adults. Second, um, we actually um, could um, involve in the preparation of these guidelines, um, not only neurologists, not only narcolepsy specialists, but also um, a few methodological experts, which are very important when you know um, formulating guidelines. This is, I think, a general tendency to rely on the advice and support of methodologists in preparing the guidelines, at least from um, from the standpoint of the European Academy of Neurology, this has become a, a good habit to involve them, and we involve them even as co-authors. And the third, um, uh, you know, point I would like to emphasize in these recent guidelines is the involvement of patients. Uh, it is becoming more and more evident that patient-related outcomes uh, uh, must be considered when formulating guidelines. So the patient may considering certain outcomes of treatment more important than others. And, so, uh, and we have uh, involved a uh, few patients representative in commenting uh, and, um, and working these guidelines. And I think this is also a great progress. I think in the future, we should never publish guidelines without having you know, the perspective and the input of patients. Now, in terms of the concrete results, uh, it is difficult now to explain the entire um, um, uh, work that we have done. Um, I think we have um, looked at non-pharmacological intervention and pharmacological intervention in, in narcolepsy. We have looked at symptomatic treatments and causal treatment. Um, the conclusions are based, obviously, on what the literature tells us, is that uh, although a non-pharmacological approach are important, counseling the patient, uh, advising them about specific behaviors and so on, unfortunately, the evidence for this intervention is quite poor. And with the exception of scheduled naps, uh, always uh, suggest is probably reasonable, but not uh, based on evidence. In terms of pharmacological intervention, we would like uh, in uh, all diseases to have a treatment that uh, stops the disease or slow down the disease, or what we call causal treatment, precise treatments. And this is not available in narcolepsy. There have been in recent years big discussions about uh, you know, the immune system playing a significant role in the appearance of narcolepsy. Uh, and the consequence would be that we use immuno modulators to, uh, you know, kind of um, influence uh, the course of the disease. Well, uh, the evidence for the use of immunomodulators is, uh, is not there. I mean, there have been reports, but uh, we have considered the evidence as non-sufficient. Uh, so unfortunately, our recommendation on treatment are um, uh, limited to symptomatic treatments. But here we have novelties and good news. Um, today, for the treatment of um, narcolepsy. We have uh, several um, medications that we can strongly recommend uh, because of good evidence for the treatment of excessive daytime sleepiness, which is actually the main symptom of narcolepsy. And we have today at least four medications that we can recommend with good, uh, with, you know, with uh, uh, with uh, good support from the literature. And we have uh, uh, one to two. Uh, up to three medications that with variable strength of recommendation, we can recommend for the treatment of catapexy. We, catapexy is the second main symptom of narcolepsy. For nocturnal um, uh, sleep disturbances, which are often, uh, not always present in narcolepsy, 
we have only one medication that we can recommend. And for other um, um, typical symptoms of narcolepsy, hallucinations, sleep paralysis, uh, the evidence is, is very limited. Now, uh, we conclude the guidelines in pointing to what we still miss today. Uh, and please excuse if I don't go into the recommendation of children, it would maybe make my answer too long. What we miss today are uh, actually two important, two, three important things that uh, the future literature should provide us. One is the use of patient-related outcomes based on function. So we have now several studies, uh, well-conducted studies, but uh, until today, uh, almost all studies did not take into consideration functional outcomes, how the patient functions, or if he has to stay awake, for instance. Uh, what is he able to do uh, from a cognitive point of view or from other functional standpoints? This needs to be improved. The second is that we do have little, if uh, I would say even uh, absent evidence for uh, the treatment of comorbidities, narcolepsy patients, frequently suffer of depression, frequently present metabolic or autonomic disturbances. Uh, the cognitive problems uh, are also very frequently encountered. And we have little, little evidence, little knowledge about how to treat these um, uh, symptoms, these comorbidities. So, uh, and finally, as I mentioned, at the beginning, we hope that the understanding of um, the etiopathophysiology of narcolepsy, which has much advanced, will possibly in the near future, um, bring some uh, new ways, uh, new targets to maybe influence not only the symptoms, but also the course of the disease. I would like to finish in this uh, survol, in this review of uh, the guidelines in saying that um, uh, behind the corner, uh, we have two, three new uh, medications uh, that are uh, now being finalized in their approval or being uh, currently tested that in our view, and also my personal view, uh, bring much hope that um, the treatment will be enriched quite, quite soon uh, with new options uh, for the patient, which uh, is uh, obviously very needed for a disease um, which is very disabling and, and although rare, not completely uncommon.